Krishna, here we are in Vladivostok, uh, eastern, far eastern part of Russia actually, and you can see it's snowing. And as I'm out here chanting my japa this morning, many thoughts are coming to my mind. Um, one time Prabhupada said a preacher sometimes sleeps under a tree or sometimes a preacher, a traveling sannyasi, sleeps in a palace. So I was thinking, in a similar way, a few days ago, we had our Sacred Sounds Kirtan Retreat in Mwulamba, Australia, at our community there, New Govardhan. It was like a celestial paradise there, uh, kind of towards the end of the summer, and uh, really, really beautiful. And we had our Kirtan party, and we were in short sleeves, chanting and dancing in the heat. <laughs> and then uh, we got on the plane, and we flew to Tokyo, Japan, and Cho Tokyo, Japan, was um, a spring was just breaking. And the sign of spring in, um, in Japan is that all these cherry trees, they blossom with these beautiful flowers. And then we got on the plane, because we're traveling preachers, me and my retinue, my party, Badahari Prabhu, Chaturatma Prabhu, Ananta, and, and um, a few others. And uh, we flew northwards some hours to Russia, to Vladivostok. And here we're beginning our tour all the way across the country to St. Petersburg. So like that, we're in, a, we're in a celestial paradise, we're in spring and then we're in midwinter. But actually the devotee is not in the mood that if the weather's nice, he's happy, and if the weather's not nice, he's not happy. We're just looking for the opportunity to spread Krishna consciousness. So we can go anywhere and, and everywhere, just like Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Earlier today I was quoting, um, Prabhupada was speaking with one devotee about his up upcoming trip to uh, Moscow, Russia. This is in the early 70s. And that devotee was saying, Prabhupada was in Hawaii, and that devotee was saying, Prabhupada, don't go to Russia now, it's, it's snowing in Moscow. You should stay here and, and rest in Hawaii. 
and enjoy the mangoes. Then Prabhupada famously said, uh, preaching in the snows of Moscow is sweeter than the sweetest mango. So that's why we come here. I've actually been coming to Russia now for almost, well, 30 years actually. And uh, this is our pleasure to, to continue the, the mission of our spiritual master, Sri Prabhupada. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi early 1970s, and uh, everyone knows the story, but Prabhupada came and it didn't appear that there was any real opportunity for spreading Krishna consciousness other than meeting a university professor, but Krishna arranged that Prabhupada met a couple of nice boys and inspired them in Krishna consciousness, and they went on to spread the movement all over this country for some time. So he had the vision, and interestingly enough, um, one time Prabhupada told my god sister Govinda Dasi, that in previous times, uh, in the Vedic culture, this part of the world was called uh, Rishiya. Rishiya means the place of the Rishis. So Prabhupada said that, and he actually stated this, that uh, the yogis who like to perform penance and austerities in cold places like the Himalayas, they would come to Russia. They would come to this far eastern part of Russia, the middle of Russia, where there's these cold winters and it's snowing like now and they perform their penance and austerities. So although we come to far distant places like this and there is some risk involved and there is a little bit of opposition building up again, we have faith that just as Sridhar Prabhupada was successful in his preaching by the mercy of the Lord, we as just try to be his sincere followers, we can also be successful in our attempts. And all credit really goes to uh, the Russian devotees, the leaders of this uh, yatra, which is very expansive all the way from St. Peters, Petersburg here to Vladivostok. The devotees have just, you know, they've really taken the, the bull by the horns, so to speak, and they've made a very well-organized yatra. There's lots of preaching going on, lots of temples are, are coming up. Um, they've even installed Radha Krishna deities in Omsk. Here in Vladivostok, they built a beautiful temple right on the shore of the, uh, of the bay here, the, the ocean and um, beautiful deity worship, and uh, they have a lot of prasadam distribution. And here, although there are restrictions now in Russia for a movement, as I mentioned, they do Harinam 365 days a year. Very enthusiastic devotees. It's, um, it's like Prabhupada told us one time in India. He said, India is such that if you just scratch 
the skin of some Indian person, he said, you'll find Krishna consciousness underneath. It's just natural for them. So Russian people are actually very pious people, you can see, because there's so many churches in this discussion, the Russian Orthodox Church, this is their, their religion here. Their people go to church, uh, it's unlike some parts of the West in Europe where the church is no longer popular. Here, people, they go and master the church on Sundays and follow all the religious holidays. So pious by nature, and therefore also interested in Krishna consciousness, because Krishna consciousness is also an ancient spiritual tradition. It has so much to offer, and Russian people love our kirtans, they love our festivals, they love our prasadam. It's, it's, it's a universal principle. My experience as a traveling preacher is no matter where I go in the world, whether I go to South America, I go to Australia, I go to Canada, I go to Europe, I come here to Russia, the same formula works. Harinam Sankatan, cultivating people in Krishna consciousness, um, distributing prasadam, uh, having festivals. This is the mood we have to keep the engine churning by, by preaching Krishna consciousness, by sharing Krishna consciousness. And if we go out of our comfort zones, so to speak, and this is really going out of your comfort zone here in the snows of Eastern Russia and Vladivostok. If we go out, we'll see that Krishna will make the arrangement that people who have that spark in their hearts to understand what is God and what is, who is Krishna ultimately, uh, they'll, they'll come forward. So this is what we're doing here. <laughs> we left the tropical paradise of uh, New Govardhan to the springtime of Japan to the freezing cold snows uh, here in Russia, and we're enjoying assisting the Russian devotees and their leadership and their GBC in our humble ways uh, to, to keep Krishna consciousness going here on a big scale. And in Vladivostok, we see that's happening. We're very proud of the devotees here, that their, their relationship with the government is very nice, and their sodom distribution, their chanting, their book distribution is going on. So we're playing our humble role as the foreign missionaries to come here and assist uh, them and Sridhar Prabhupada to keep the mission here in Rishiya Rishi in Russia going full steam. Thank you Sridhar Prabhupada for giving us this opportunity to follow in your footsteps and continue preaching Krishna consciousness and all glories to the Russian devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.